Hey, this is Dave Liu with Guns.com, and today we're looking at the Stoger Cougar 8000 series. Now, the firearms community would like to have you believe that firearm technology progresses every single month and that every single year you need to buy the newest, latest, and greatest gun. But in a purely like functional, practical point of view, um, that's not really true. We have, there's a lot of old gun designs that are really great and still hold up today. One such gun is this Cougar 8000 series, made by Stoger. This standard version is a 15 plus one pistol. It's a compact size, so it's around the size of a Glock 19. It has an all metal frame and a traditional double single action trigger. Now there's three things that really set this pistol apart from other guns. One, it is very soft shooting. Uh, the recoil is, is better than a other guns in its typical size and weight. Uh, second, it's very accurate. And third, nowadays you can get these pistols at a really good price. Because of its size and weight, it functions in multiple different roles. It's small enough that you can carry it uh, on a daily basis, but it's also large enough and heavy enough that you can shoot it really well and accurately. And because of the recoil system, you can shoot it very, very fast. So this would be great as a competition gun as well. I've seen it used on guns.com for under $300. So for that price, this gun really is a steal. Now, I first tried the Cougars back in the early 90s, and I absolutely loved them, but they were actually Beretta Cougars. Uh, Beretta started making these in about 1994 and made them for about 10 years. After that, they discontinued it and started making the, their upgraded version of this action called the PX4, but they didn't completely abandon this design. They actually moved it over to be manufactured by their subsidiary, Stoger. They, it, since it's the same family, they use the exact same machines to build these, so the guns from Stoger are almost exactly identical to the Beretta ones. Now, why does this gun shoot so softly? It's because it uses a rotating barrel recoil system. Now, that's totally different from most modern handguns. Most modern handguns use the Browning tilting system. Basically, what that is is when you fire the gun, the barrel tilts out of the way when it unlocks to eject the round. This gun, the barrel doesn't tilt, it rotates. And that system is supposed to be much softer recoiling. I mean, there's lots of reasons behind it, all in the engineering. But basically, from my understanding is, because it rotates, more energy from the recoil is required to rotate the barrel. So therefore, it bleeds off more of that energy so you don't feel it as the shooter. Also, it makes it a little bit more accurate because the barrel never leaves the direction of the target. A, belt, a tilting system, the barrel kind of tilts up, tilts away from the target. This one, the barrel stays exactly in line with the target and just rotates on its axis. So why don't more manufacturers do the rotating system? Well, from what I understand, the rotating system costs a little bit more to manufacture. The tilting system, which most guns nowadays are, Glocks, Smith & Wessons, and so forth, works great. And everybody knows, right? They're reliable and they're accurate. This one, just a little bit more accurate, just a little bit more soft. So it's not, it doesn't really make sense for manufacturers from a building millions of guns, you know, cost perspective. But for you guys as individuals, you might want to give it a try. It gives you a little bit extra soft shooting and a little bit extra accuracy. Now, another interesting feature of this gun is it is a traditional double single action trigger. Back when this gun was designed, that was much more popular. Now, most pistols are striker fired and you basically you get one consistent trigger pull every single time you shoot it. This is a little bit different. The philosophy behind this is your first trigger pull, if you're in a defensive situation, you want it to be a little bit heavier so that you don't actually accidentally pull the trigger. So the first double action, first trigger pull is double action. It's a little bit heavier and it basically pulls the hammer from an uncocked position all the way to a cocked position and then releases. Hence the double action, it does two things, pulls the hammer back and releases it. After your first shot, every subsequent shot is single action, meaning that it's in the cock position and you only have to press the trigger pretty lightly. The trigger pull isn't hard to, take, to, to set off those single action shots. So first trigger pull, a little bit heavy, every shot after that, much lighter, much smoother. Now, when I started shooting, most guns were traditional double action, single action. So I cut my teeth on this type of trigger system. I'm pretty good at it. I have no problems using it whatsoever. But for a shooter who's grown up with single action or striker fired guns, it might take a little bit to get used to. There is a bit of a benefit though. 
if you get good at pulling a double action trigger, every other trigger is easy. So in a sense, I got better at shooting other guns because I had to learn on a double action trigger. Another thing to note on the Cougars is that it has a manual safety. Now this manual safety is actually slide mounted, not frame mounted like a 1911. Personally, I love guns with external safeties because I carry appendix and I like to have a manual safety for that added bit of safety. However, there's one interesting thing that most people get wrong on the slide mounted safeties. Most people incorrectly engage them. Because of the way it looks, a lot of people feel that they have to swipe up, move their hand out of position and push up on the safety. That's actually the wrong way to do it. You can swipe your finger down across the safety and disengage it, just like you swipe down when you're disengaging a 1911. The motion is the exact same and it was designed that way. But for some reason, most people, when they see it, they think they gotta swipe up and that's a weird motion, but you don't really have to. Swiping down, just like a 1911, will disengage this safety. All right, let's talk about accuracy and reliability. I've told you before, very accurate gun. And you can see from the shots I put uh, when we were shooting on the range, I think we're about 15 yards. Really great group. I really do think these are a little bit more accurate. Now, on a ransom test, I don't know if that'll come out, but I think, and from my experience, these type of guns and rotating barrel guns are usually a little bit more accurate. Reliability-wise, Beretta, Stoger, great reputations. These guns were de developed in the heyday of the, the Beretta M9 and uh, have great, great uh, reputations for reliability. I had no problems whatsoever. Now, over the years, Beretta came out and now Stoger has come, have lots of different models of this Cougar. This one is a standard one, which is nine millimeter and with a double stack magazine and kind of a full, full hand, grip, hand grip size. But there are lots of other ones that you can get and there's the different model numbers. I call it the Beretta 8000 series because the entire series of the 8000 numbers are all Cougars. So there's the 8040 is the 40 cal version of this gun. The 8045 is the 45 caliber version of this gun. They also do a 357 caliber and then they do shorter grips too, more compact models which have a shorter grip so that you can conceal it better. And I believe they also have some single stack models that are thinner so that you, know, you can conceal it better as well. So there's lots of different models to choose from if you're looking at the Cougar, all with the same rotating barrel design. Now, some of the downsides of this pistol is one, the accessories. It's an older design gun and Back in the 90s, there weren't as many accessories available. So there's not as much stuff to kind of put on and modify for this gun. Holster wise is probably the biggest issue. Not too many holster manufacturers still make holsters for the Cougar. There are a few out there. The way I got around it though, is because this is not my gun, and, but I still wanted to be able to holster it. I used a Filster floodlight. This holster doesn't go off of the gun model, it goes off of the light. So when I attach my Streamlight TLR1 to this gun, that holster basically holds any gun with the Streamlight TLR1. So because I put the, the light on this gun, I was able to use that holster. But there are other options out there if you decide to get this gun. I was able to mount the light onto this gun because the Stogers have a Picatinny rail. That is something a bit newer on, a, uh, on some of the Stoger models. I believe the old Beretta one did not have a Picatinny rail on them, but these Stogers do so that you can add those accessories. Now, the only other issue I had with this particular pistol is the trigger reach. Now, personally for me, the distance where, that you have to pull the trigger is a little bit short. That's basically distance from the back strap to the trigger pull. When I fully pull the trigger back, my finger goes past 90 degrees, has to, has to come past 90 degrees to be able to fully pull that trigger. That's not the most comfortable for me and for my hand shape. You know, every shooter is gonna be different and hand fit is incredibly important when you're choosing a pistol. For me, because of that trigger distance, it's a little bit too short. Most modern pistols nowadays address that by having different size back straps that you can modify. This was an older design that they didn't really do it back then. So you can't really modify this gun in that way. The, the, the shape of the gun is pretty much, you know, standard on all the guns. So therefore, you need to go out and try it. If you want, to, if you want this pistol, you're going to have to pick it up and give it a feel. So you won't really know if a gun is for you until you've actually shot and tried it. So that's why I highly recommend if you're interested in a gun, go out, go to a range, see if you can rent it, see if you have friends who have ones that you can give it a try. Even go up on the internet. I know lots of guys who are more than happy to show you their guns and let you try them out. So 
before you buy, I highly recommend fitting the gun into your hand and shooting it a bunch of rounds before you decide what to get. So in conclusion, I think the Stoger Cougar 8000 series is incredibly underrated. For the price that you can get it for now, it is awesome. It's reliable, it's accurate, and it's soft shooting, and you can do a lot with it. Now, if you are intrigued by this rotating gun design, but you want a few more of the modern gun features, stay tuned. My next review is gonna be for the Breda PX4, which is what Beretta did when they upgraded this barrel. Well, I hope you found this review helpful. Remember to like and subscribe. And what do you think about these older guns and older gun designs? Do you like them? Have you ever tried them before? Or are you going to go out because of this review and, and give it a shot? Uh, leave a comment in the comments. It really helps us out a lot. <music>